In Java, an iterator is a component that enables you to iterate through a collection of elements, typically a collection of objects. The Java iterator interface in the Java util package represents such an iterator. Typically, you will obtain an iterator from a Java collection like a list or a set. And I've created two examples here illustrating that. The first example here creates a list, adds three elements to it, and then calls a list.iterator, which returns an iterator that I can now use to iterate the elements stored in the list. And I do the same here with the set, create a set, add three elements to it, and then I call the set.iterator, which can now be used to this iterator return from list iterator can now be used to iterate the elements stored in the set. Finally, it is also possible to obtain an iterator from a map, but it works a little bit differently. You can either obtain an iterator that can iterate through the set of keys stored in the map, um, or you can have um, obtain an iterator that can iterate through the values um, stored in the map, or you can obtain an iterator that can iterate through entries stored in the map and an entry consists of a key and a value. So either you can get just the keys, just the values or key value pairs. To iterate the elements available through an iterator, you have to use a combination of the iterator has next and the iterator next methods. And I've created an example here that illustrates that. First, I create a list and I add three elements to the list. And then here I call list.iterator, which returns an iterator. Now I can use this iterator inside of a while loop. I keep calling has next and has next uh, will um, return true if there are more elements left in the iterator and false if not. So I keep calling it within this while loop. And inside the while loop, I call the next method. And the next method will return the, the, currently, the current element that the iterator is pointing to and then advance the internal pointer in the iterator to the next element. And I keep doing that in a while loop and eventually the iterator.next uh, method here will have advanced the internal pointer beyond the uh, last element and then has next will return false and the while loop will end. And you can see it is the same that I do down here when I am iterating through the elements of a set. There's no difference here. Now let's try to run this example and see what the output looks like. Um, as you can see, we iterate through the elements in the list first and we print them out here, right? And that is Jane, Heidi and Hannah. And that is the exact same order actually that we added the um, the names to the list in right because and that's something that is determined by the iterator returned by a list that the elements are uh, returned by the iterator in the same order they are stored inside the list um, however when we iterate through the set uh, you can see that jane heidi and hannah are also added to the set but when we print them out, we get them out in a different order. It's Heidi, Hannah and Jane. It looks like almost uh, like reverse order, but that is because a set does not actually guarantee the order uh, in which the elements are stored internally. Uh, at least the has set does not. If you use a tree set, um, that will actually guarantee some ordering, but uh, that is outside the scope of this uh, tutorial. Um, if you check out my set tutorial, you can see more uh, more about how that works. So just to sum it up, the order that the elements of the underlying collection is iterated in is determined by the collection that creates the iterator that you are using to iterate them with. It is not guaranteed by the iterator interface. In the examples I've shown you so far, I have used a, a generic type for the collections that I've created and therefore also for the iterators that I have created. And I've created an example here that illustrates this again. Like you can see, I create a list and the generic type is set to string. And that means that when we call list.iterator, it returns an iterator of type iterator with the generic type string. It is also possible to create a list here without a generic type. I have an example here. 
And if I call list2 here.iterator, then I get an iterator without a generic type as well. And as a consequence of that, I will have to uh, cast all the um, objects returned by the iterator next method here. Because now you, you no longer know what type of element is returned by the iterator. So you have to cast them yourself. Um, if you know the generic type of your collection and thereby of the iterator, then it is considered a really good practice to specify it. Right? Don't leave it out just because it seems like it's easier, because it's actually easier for the next person reading your code to see what kind of objects are supposed to be stored in this list and also then which are returned by the iterator. When the, there is a generic type specified for the for the collection and also for the iterator. It is not allowed to modify the uh, underlying collection while you are iterating it. And if, if you do that anyways, you will get an, a concurrent modification exception thrown from the iterator next method. And I've created an example here that illustrates that here. Create a list, add three elements to it, uh, call list.iterator to obtain an iterator from the list. And then I iterate through the elements in the list. But notice here that I am actually removing the last element of the list inside this loop that iterates through the elements of the iterator. And let's run this uh, example here and see what happens. Now you can see that the first time we call next, uh, it works fine. And then we modify the, the list that actually uh, succeeds as well. And then the next time around that we call next, you can see here the exception in the exception stack trace. It says that the exception comes from the next call. The next time we call next, the iterator detects that the list up here has been changed since the iterator was created and thus it throws a concurrent modification exception. The name concurrent modification exception might make you think that this means that the underlying list or set or whatever collection you are iterating has been modified concurrently by another thread. But that is not what it means. It just means that the underlying collection has been modified while the collection is being iterated with an iterator. So in other words, it means that the, the underlying collection has been changed since one of the iterators that you have obtained from that collection has been created. So if you see a concurrent modification exception in your code, this does not necessarily mean that you have a multi-threading problem in your code, unless, of course, you are actually modifying or accessing the same collection from different threads. But as I have shown in this example, this uh, a concurrent modification exception can be thrown even when you have just a single thread accessing the underlying collection. It All it takes is that you modify the underlying collection while you're iterating through the, um, the collection with an iterator. And um, additionally, you will only get an, um, a concurrent modification exception if you call next on an iterator uh, that was created before the change. Now let's imagine that I, I um, completely um, iterate through all the elements in this loop. Here, this while loop, everything goes well down here. We modify the list and then we obtain another iterator and um, iterate the elements of the list at that point. Well, since we are no longer accessing the first iterator, which was created bef you know, when the list only had three elements or before the, uh, the modification here, we will not get an, um, a concurrent modification exception when we use the next one. Let me just show you here. Let's just copy this. And let me show you now iterator two. And um, here let's let's actually modify the the list. We say list remove um, list at size minus one. So now we remove the last element. And now we obtain another iterator, and we iterate um, through that. And you will see now this this will work. There, there's no problem here because the iterator that we created up here, we are no longer using after this modification here, down here. Now we obtain a new iterator and that is not a problem. 
to iterate, uh, you know, the the elements the way they look in the list. Now let me just try to run the example, and I can show you that now it works just fine. Now you can see in the first iteration we get Jane, Heidi, Hannah out, and in the last one only Jane and Heidi because we just removed Hannah. So after the while loop stops here and we kind of throw away this iterator up here, we kind of forget about it, then we will no longer be in danger of getting uh, concurrent modification exceptions anymore. As long as you don't call this iterator again in the future when the uh, underlying collection has been changed, then you need to obtain a new iterator and iterate the collection from scratch again. It is actually possible to remove elements from uh, the underlying collection while you're iterating it if you call the iterator remove method and not uh, like I did here in this example call the list remove directly. Let's just try to uh, have a look at how that looks here. I just delete all this code. Now in here I call iterator.remove and that means that um, iterator remove now gets called for each iteration of the while loop and iterator.remove here will remove the element that was previously returned by the next method. So that means that for every uh, iteration through the loop, I can obtain the next element, I can inspect it, and based on the value of this element, I can decide if it needs to be removed or not. And you can see here in this case, I just remove them always, right? I don't have any if statements or anything, but it would be possible for you to, to check it and see if it needs to be removed. Now, after this while loop finishes, the list will be empty because we have uh, iterated through all the elements and removed them one, one by one. And so we expect now that the size of the list is um, zero. Let's just run this example here and, um, and see that this is also the case. And as you can see, we first iterate through uh, all the elements and then the, the while loop finishes and then we print the, the size of the list and it's zero because all of the elements were removed during iteration. So if you want to remove elements uh, during the iteration of, uh, of the elements stored in, in some collection like a list or a set, you need to use the iterator.remove method. That way the, the iterator can keep track of which elements are removed so the iteration does not get out of sync with the underlying collection. Java also contains a special list iterator, which is a slightly more advanced iterator, which can be used to iterate the elements of a list in both directions, meaning both forward and backwards. Um, and I've created an example here that shows you how that works. I won't get uh, like into great detail about the list iterator uh, interface. It has actually more methods that I am uh, that I'm showing you here, but I just want to show you a quick example of how how it works. So I create a normal list here and then I call here list iterator instead of iterator. And as you can see, the type is now a list iterator, not a normal iterator. And um, since list iterator extends uh, the normal uh, iterator interface, you can use the has next and next methods and iterate the elements in forward order from the first to the last element. But as you can see here, when I'm done, iterating all the elements all the way to the end, I can actually iterate them backwards again using the exact same iterator here. I use the same iterator, uh, the list iterator here, and I just simply call has previous. As long as it has an element that was before the previously uh, returned element, I can go backwards to the next one and print that out. And now when I run this example, you can see that first we get Jane, Heidi, Hannah from the first iteration. That's uh, iterating them uh, in forward direction, Jane, Heidi, Hannah, the same sequence in which they were, were added to the list. And then you can see we get, uh, you know, during the second iteration, when we are iterating, you know, backwards through the list iterator, we're getting the values Hannah, Heidi, and Jane, which is reverse order, right? And uh, in this example here, I showed you that, you know, this example here I showed you iterates the iterator all the way to the end before it starts going backwards. But that is not necessary. You can go both forward and backwards um, during the same iteration and during the same loop. Then it is just up to you to find out when to stop the iteration. The last thing I want to show you in this Java iterator uh, video is that it is possible to implement the iterator interface yourself. Imagine you have implemented some kind of collection, a tree or some other kind of data structure, 
and you would like that data structure to be iterable through uh, an iterator and you can create your own iterator for that specific uh, collection yourself. In this example, I'm creating a very simple uh, iterator here just to show you how it looks and um, exactly how an, an iterator will be implemented completely depends on the underlying collection that it will be iterating through. So in this case, I'm just creating a very simple uh, list iterator. You can see here I, I have a list, a variable here, and I have an index which kind of points to the current uh, element that uh, the iterator is pointing to. And you can see when I create a list here with the in, in the my list iterator constructor, we take the list in a source. And um, you can see here that the has next method that I must implement because that is part of the iterator interface will return um, whether the index, this variable up here, is smaller than the size of the list. And that means that if the index is smaller than the size of the list, that means we still have not returned the last element from the list. And then you can see in the next method, which I also have to implement, I return the uh, the element pointed to by index, and then I increment the index afterwards, after obtaining this element. And um, to use this uh, little iterator here, will look just like, um, almost like using a normal uh, iterator. Uh, you can see I create a list here and I add three elements to it and then I create a new iterator but in this particular case I create a new instance uh, of my own iterator and I pass the list here as a parameter to the constructor. But the rest is the same, right? We call the iterator has next in a loop and for each iteration call the next uh, method of the iterator and then print out the value and Let's just run this so you can see that this actually works, right? One, two, three is what is added to the list. And one, two, three are the values returned by the iterator in that order. But wait, there's just one more thing that I want to show you about the Java iterator interface before uh, I finish up this video. And that is that since Java 8, the iterator interface has a new method called for each remaining. And you can call this method and pass a lambda expression to it. And then that lambda expression gets called one time for each remaining element in the iterator. And I have an example here that shows how that works. First, I create a list, add three elements to it, and obtain an iterator. This is all standard. And then the example here calls for each remaining. And as parameter is passed this uh, Java lambda expression, and this will get called once for each element in the list. And that means the first time that this lambda expression gets called, the first element will be passed as the parameter to the lambda expression and thus get printed out. And the second time, the second element will get passed as parameter. And the third time, the third element will be cast as parameter to the lambda expression. Let's run this example here and see that this is also what we get. And you can see we get Jane, Heidi, Hannah, and that is the elements added up here and in exactly the order they were added in the list. And that is, of course, because this is a list iterator. So as you can see, we can use the phrase remaining to iterate um, the elements of an iterator in a slightly more functional manner than uh, the standard while loop with a while has next call iterator next. That pretty much covers the Java iterator interface. Remember to check out the description below the video uh, for a link to a textual version of this tutorial as well as links to other related tutorials. And if you like this video, hit the like button and uh, maybe subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one.